Tell me if you guys think this is a little fruit. This is my Starbucks order. Vente iced vanilla latte, soy milk with a nat shot. Man. You got to cut the soy out, bro. Hey, man, I like it. I can't quit you. I can't quit the soy. What did I tell you a couple of years ago? My wife was a what? Vegan. And then so we got into some soy shit. And now I'm stuck eating the soy. I can't get rid of it. I tried regular milk. I try oat milk. I try freaking fucking lizard milk. Whatever it is. I can't. Mama's milk. I do like that. Hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 I just had a baby. Hey, your boy's been known to go straight from the tap. Welcome back to the pod. My name's Kenny here with my co-host, Matt. What's going on, brother? What's up, guys? Welcome back. Yeah. You know, before we get started, okay. We live in Temecula, California. Yeah. It is white girl city. It I, is freaking tight pants, Ugg boots, vests, Birkenstocks, vests, fake cowboy hat. If you got, if you want, ever want to date a girl in Temecula, California, it's going to cost you $14 a day because you got to go to Starbucks. And you end up buying yourself a drink also. I have my own Starbucks cup uh, order. If this is, tell me if you guys think this is a little fruit. This is my Starbucks order. Vente iced vanilla latte. <laughs> Soy milk. With a nat shot. Matt. You got to cut the soy out, bro. Hey, man, I like it. I can't quit you. I can't quit the soy. I, I told you, what did I tell you a couple of years ago? My wife was a what? Vegan. And then so we got into some soy shit, okay? And I ended up liking it. And now I'm stuck eating the soy. I can't get rid of it. I tried regular milk. I try oat milk. I try freaking fucking lizard milk. Whatever it is. I can't. Mama's milk? I do like that. Hey. <laughs> Hey, 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 I just had a baby. Hey, your boy's been known to go straight from the tap <laughs> a couple of times. And that's probably the open. And I hit that early in the, early in the episode. My wife's going to watch it. I told you my wife only watches the first 15 minutes. So I got, I got my, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. But your boy does like mama's milk. Uh, but yeah, soy milk. That's what, that's what I like. I can't help it. I can't help it. That's. And so I get that order. And so that's going to cost me 13 bucks a day. So if you want to date a girl in Temecula, California, it's going to cost you 13 bucks a day because you're going to find your Starbucks order and hers. It could be more. It could be $24 a day. There's been plenty of times where your boy doubles up and goes twice. I, I feel like there's the, uh, the bougie coffee is starting to make its way into our area. So we've got like the better buzz, uh, the rival coffee company mm. where it's like, there's one and the, these ladies will drive across town. I know. I know. And it's like the, it's like the Stanley cup, bro. You know what I mean? Wait it, till the Dutch brothers hits Menifee. Oh, they're building one into Marietta. Yeah. Yeah. You're a Look at bro. I, I I'm like, I like my coffee. Like a real person should mostly creamer, a little bit of coffee. Yeah. My shit is light. It's like, you know, it's a freaking almost a caramel color. Anybody who says they like their coffee black, I like my coffee black. They hate themselves. You also probably say you like freaking Colgate toothpaste. You're <laughs> fucking lying. You probably brush your teeth with baking soda. You're lying. You're just trying to be manly. You're not that manly. No one likes black coffee. No one likes black licorice. I don't like coffee at all. I used to not. Yeah. And I met my wife. The only thing I'll drink from Starbucks I'm obsessed. is uh, frac mocha frappuccino. I used to, I was a mocha frappuccino yeah. guy. I feel like that's a gateway drug to, to coffee, but I've, I've stopped there. I've managed to dip my toe in the water. I also used, used to do the strawberry acai refresher, no water, add lemonade, two pumps of raspberry. <laughs> Your boy's real fruity with the Starbucks <laughs> orders, dude. I'm real uh, fruity with my Starbucks orders. So one of the things that Dutch Brothers has that I like is they've got, um, I like energy drinks. I like Red Bull specifically, and they have their own brand of Red Bull called Rebels. They taste ex exactly the same, but they do blended with the pumps of, so you can get like strawberry, watermelon, f blended Red Bull. It tastes like an icy with Red Bull in it. Pfft, done. 
That sounds good. Yeah. I not really, you know, I'm, you could say like in Temecula, you could be like, are you, does your family have a gold card for Starbucks? Many people in Temecula say, yes, we're gold card members. We're double gold card members. <laughs> Cause now your boy goes and gets his foodie drinks on his own. I'm just out. I'm out here making memes Freaking Starbucks and tapping people out. That's what I try to do <laughs> when I can. But that's not why even I wanted to bring this up. Just like Starbucks, all the girls in this planet right now in this area. Yeah. This, I'm just assuming it's this area. If it's in another, if your wife or girlfriend or mom or sister or side piece is <laughs> is telling you this, and you're in another place. First of all, bonjour. Secondly. Are they obsessed with sour, sourdough bread as much as the girls in our area are? Everybody's talking about sourdough bread. If your wife has a sourdough starter, comment starter in the, the comments. Yeah, starter. starter. Hey, my wife's obsessed with sourdough bread. The fucking girl at the pickup at the kids, they're obsessed with sourdough bread. Sourdough bread is like most of my feed and my <laughs> all my... F- on my reels is like, was that the for you? Yeah. It's all sourdough bread stuff. Cause my wife just sends me sourdough bread stuff. Mine is houses in Texas, jujitsu and, uh, dots and puppies. Dots like and wiener, wiener dogs. Cause my wife wants one. She, uh, she was saying that she does want a yeah. wiener dog. Um, yeah, I don't know what the craze of sourdough bread is. I, I do fancy me a sourdough Jack. Yeah. <laughs> from Jack in a box. You know, you can get any, any of the burgers at, at Jack in the box on sourdough if you request it. Psh- that's a hack right bacon, there. Bacon ultimate cheeseburger on sourdough. Fishing with dynamite. Yeah. Mama's milk style. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to know what the craze is. Are you obsessed with sourdough bread? Does your wife subs- let us know because this, this is ridiculous. My wife starter, uh, I think it, it fell off. So she's looking for, she's looking for someone to donate a starter that's, that's thriving so she can jump in the sourdough. It's almost bread. like having a Furby. Or like one of those little things. Remember those right. little eggs? Tamagotchi. You could have as a kid. You had to feed it. Yeah. It's like having one of those. Did you pet or whatever? And like you're like watch. You're like creating yeah. it. Or like a one of those little sea monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, sourdough bread. We're not even talking about jujitsu right now. Um, but breaking news. Bam, bam. Don't have the buzzer. Kenny, you, you. Wait, hold on, hold on. You. Competed yesterday at the LA Open. I did. I did compete. One man bracket. One man bracket. One time. All you got. Let's break it down. What we? What color? Kind of gee did you wear? What color? Black gee. Level black. Level black gee. Were you nervous? I brought a second gee because I've I've listened to this podcast. Smart. <laughs> um, what is that? Notorious. The bag. Notorious combat. Bag. Notorious combat bag. That thing is clutch. It's clutch. You can fit a lot of geese yeah. in there. Two geese, belt, uh, headphones, slip, uh, slippers, the whole nine. And I still had space left, so that bag is clutch. Um, but, yeah, so I brought two, uh, two geese. I've never, because I only competed in, in, like, a no-gi tournament before and then uh, a World League. And World League's like, yeah, your geese on. You know what I mean? Then, yeah, yeah. Then they kind of wave you by. It's like fake chow. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> uh, IBJJF is, like, stuffing a fucking measurement stick down my sleeve to make sure that I, th- that was, I was like, Oh shit. Like they're real. It got, a little, it got a little tight here. And then he did the other side and it slid right through. I was like, all right, clearly I'm right-handed. Everybody's got a strong side. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so they, they checked, they checked, you know, whatever they check. And then he waved me by and I was like, Phew. I mean, I had the, the other gear that I brought was like slightly larger. So I knew it would have been fine there. But um, then I, I, I was on weight. I've been on weight all week. I had to go to the bathroom like an hour before mm. I had to suit up and I heard dudes just fucking in there. Just yakking, hey, bro. What have we said before? You never trust a jujitsu bathroom. No, dude. It is the most disgusting thing you'll dude, ever see. I, I couldn't believe it. I was not expecting that. I just saw dudes in and out of the bathroom all day. I was like, oh, like obviously everybody's, there's a lot of people there. They got to pee. As soon as I walked in there, it's like you see little kids washing their hands, and then you just hear in the back stalls. Just, I'm just like, in all, there's six stalls and probably four dudes in them puking. Yeah, it's like I'm that, like, this is insane. It's like that Bob Saget, like there's shit everywhere. <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It was wild, and so 
I, after that, I like low key, I'd already checked my weight earlier that day. So I like went and checked again just to make sure. And I'm like, we're good. Release the demon. Yeah. Yeah. The, the demon is gone. So we're back. We're in the bullpen. One to go. Um, so let's, let's break down the match. What happened? We lock up. Um, we start. Um, I, I was, I was cool, calm, collected all day until I hit the bullpen. Then the nerves kind of kicked up a little bit, mm-hmm. but not bad. I had, um, uh, brown belt Danny um, by my side, just kind of calming me down, bullshit with me for a little bit and whatnot, which kind of took my head out of it, you know? Right. Um, then I was good. Then they called our name out. They called him out first. And uh, so I saw who he was. And, um, and then I walked out there. And, and like, you saw me like, fuck this guy. I'm fucking you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I, uh, just joking. I just, I just tried to like kind of focus and whatnot. You, um, I got in front of the mat and whatnot. I'm kind of, I'm see, you know, uh, Professor Jason in front of me, my wife, kid, you know, the team and whatnot. I'm not, fa- I'm not, I don't get like weirded out by like people being there. I'm not phased by it or whatever. I was like, I felt good to have some support and shit. And uh, I just kind of like try to focus in on Jason and like his voice, just kind of zone in on that. And um, they, he calls us out. We shake his hands. Um, I shake, you know, his hands or whatever. And then we get to it. And I'm expecting anything at this point. I'm, my goal is let's keep this standing up as long as possible. Um, wait for him to try to shoot on me or whatnot. Um, I'd say about 30 seconds in, he pulls guard and jumps. So you wanted to play off his mistake. Yes. Yeah. And he jumps straight to half and off the bat grabs deep half. Like I was, I was shocked by that. I thought he was going to pull half and shoot for deep half. He grabbed deep half on the guard pull. So, um, I was like, okay, I, I'm sitting back. I'm kind of keeping my balance and whatnot. Um, I can hear his coach trying to coach him through things and whatnot. And I just try to, Everything his coach would say, I would just mitigate it. So like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, finally, I'm you know Jason's telling me like you know underhook, underhook, underhook. But he had his his top arm real tight, so it was hard to underhook on it. I'm I'm like waiting for an opportunity for some space, not seeing it. And then like maybe like a minute into it, I realized like this isn't a training partner. Like this is an actual match. I don't have to be nice. You know what I mean? So cheese grater is yeah, ass. Cross face shoved his face into the mat which you could just tell like really slowed him down because now he can't even listen to what his coach is saying because he's too busy trying to breathe and and not get my fucking gi just smothered into his his gullet so and if you've i've rolled kenny a couple times he's kind of like the kicker off the replacements like he don't think of much of you don't think he's going to be as strong as he is he's wiry yeah <laughs> he's wiry like <laughs> yeah he's stronger than he looks so i'm like oh fuck this guy like i remember i fucked around with kenny one time and he freaking was on top of me and i was like oh fuck i can't get him off of me this fucking guy's stronger than you think yeah that uh there was one time where i was able to um he kept grabbing my my sleeve and i was able to to like grab his sleeve pin it to the ground and then i like i um I put my knee on it and his coach was started screaming, that's what you want. That's good. That's only going to help you. And I'm sitting there going like, he can't move his arm. How's it going to help him? But he, there was one point where he tried to do the sweep on me, but I based like way soon. Dick and dirt. Yeah. And he, tr- he tried that twice. Finally, I was able to, to get the underhook and um, I switched my hips, pulled my leg out. I was able to escape um, right when I was getting ready to, to try to establish side control. Um, to get the points, he uh, he bucked me up and caught my leg again. So he didn't have deep half anymore, but he did get half back. And uh, and then Jason's telling me, you should have, like, like, after it's too late, you should have circled his head to 50-50. And I'm, I'm like, tell me some shit. Hey, North Jason, South. tell me some shit I can use now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I know you can't say that. I can say that as my friend. <laughs> tell me some shit I can use now. So yeah, uh, I and, and in hindsight, immediately I'm thinking like, fuck, I should have gone north south. Like, <laughs> like yeah, obviously, you know, but uh, I was not thinking it at that moment. Monday time. morning quarterbacking during mid roll. Right. But at that point, like I, I'm comfortable being in someone's half. You know what I mean? Like I, it, it's it's not something that I usually get got with. Top half, if you've got, especially if you got or over on their face. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you got one underhook, you're pretty chilling there. Yeah. So you that, just don't let him get that underhook. So I came behind his head, I lifted him up, I put the fist behind his his rib cage, and I laid back on him and ah. like really buried the chest into him. And you could hear his breathing change at that at that point. And then I was like, I looked over at the clock, there was like a minute fifteen left, and I was like, I can I can ride this out. And he he was struggling to get me off, and that's all it was. It was just him fighting to get me off. And, Sometimes that's yeah. all it takes. Yeah. So and 
Here we go. LA Open gold medalist, Kenny. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Now, that being said, did this ignite a fire in you? Do you like want to compete a bunch now? Um, I only I only want to compete IBJJF just for the points because I think I do want to do Worlds this year. But um, in the same aspect, there's it's like there's Orange County Open, which is coming up. Um, I'm not going to be able to make that just because we have some prior engagements that we'll talk about later. Um, and then there's San Diego Open, which I'm going to hit. So I, uh, I already next week I'll, I'll, I'll pay it, but I already registered for San Diego open. So had a boy. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it now. We, if you notice, we've been doing some podcasts, had some guests. Yeah. We got a special invite. Yeah. We got a, the boys are going on a road trip and we're going to get sticky. No, we're not. We're not going to get sticky. We're definitely not. But we're going on a road trip. Your boys, <laughs> your boys are going to Las Vegas. We're going to be at the PGF finals. Yep. Interviewing the fighters, interviewing, getting a lot of content for the page. Um, we'll probably do a vlog. I think we might do like a vlog, a road vlog on the way up there. We'll post to our YouTube. I actually, um, I bought my wife uh, this little portable gimbal camera system called an Osmo pocket mm-hmm. that shoots 4k and whatnot. It's like this big, but super amazing quality. And, um, it shoots in vertical for stories. The crazy thing about this place is it's being, the whole tournament is being recorded at the freaking bunny ranch, which is <laughs> wild to me. So if you're checking, the, if you're checking the location, that's, uh, Hey, <laughs> Talk about no gi, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I'm pretty jacked about it. Yeah. Got to buy a suit, though. I don't own a suit. I'm kind of stoked for that. We get to be suited and booted. Suited and booted. And then, you know, I got some friends like, you wearing J's with your suit? I'm like, I don't think so, dude. Yeah. Like, I was like, I'm not that cool. <laughs> I'm not that cool. No, I think it'll be nice. It'll be, yeah, it'll be a fun trip, though. So, uh, yeah, I, I think the, the plan is to kind of vlog the whole drive out. When we get there, checking in, you know, the, the finals doesn't start till four. So I'm sure we'll be, we'll be there a little early. We too. might be able to do a car cast. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because we, we cause I mean, and we could just record one. Yeah. On our way up there. That'd be fun. Topics and stuff and just talk. Yeah. I don't know. You're a tech guy. I don't know if we could pull that off. Oh, we could pull that off. What is on our way to bullshitting. Yeah. We could pull that off. Now, I don't think there'll be any video of that, that one. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't think so, but we could definitely have an audio one tanked for that. We, it, um, and then with the vlog, yeah, no, we could we we could even work out video. We just do widescreen camera in the car. We'll make it happen. There you go. See my fucking ketchup stains on my shirt and shit. I'll have um, I got those wireless lapel mics. We'll just put right. those on the shirts. There, say less. Bro. Boom, done. Say less. But yeah, we're going to Vegas. Yeah, that'll Chevy be fun Chase, one. dude. We're freaking make some fun, smart, rational decisions. Um, <laughs> um, but, but we're getting this invite. Um, and it's, it, it, it's the opportunities there because of the podcast, the podcast is here because of everybody that's listening right now. So 100%. thank you guys. Yeah. You guys made this happen. Like yeah. we were just a couple of dudes that like jujitsu and you know, dads and who just are passionate about the sport and your guys is, you know, react, um, actions with the podcast and following us and supporting us that has made this possible. So. You know, Brandon McCaffrey invited us out there to be part of it. We're stoked. We'll all go out there together and uh, represent our community best we can. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited too. There's a lot of who's who in the jujitsu game there. And so to be able to get some FaceTime with those people and, and make some connections and, and, you know, get some content for the page. And I'm excited for that. Yeah, me too. So that being said, today, I kind of want to talk about a couple of weeks ago, I talked about helicopter parents and like letting your kid explore himself on the mat, let the coaches coach. And I kind of wanted to dwell on the other side of that. Um, I kind of wanted to dwell on like as a younger athlete, as like the little kids, a hundred percent, let them find themselves. But this is more about the 13, the 14, the 12, the young blue belts. These kids as a professor, you got to kind of find, I saw this clip on um, 
the internet and I was like, wow, that's a pretty good perspective. So I kind of want to say, you got to kind of find your, your, it's your coach. When you're the professor, it's kind of like, you got to stop as the, you have to kind of teach your kids to stop playing around so much and take it more serious. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like don't disrespect, like kind of like teach your kids, like don't disrespect your parents by giving a lackluster effort in the gym. Yeah. If you are going to give yourself laugh, if you are giving lackluster effort in the gym, then maybe jujitsu is something you need to step away from a little bit because a lot of these parents are trying to be the best they can be and let the coaches coach. Right. And, but you see your kid, you know, screwing off, screwing off. And you're like, dude, like in a lot of money for this, I'm left work early to be here. Right. I, you know, I'm sacrificing a lot to, so you can live out your dream or you can compete. So right. don't, and that's not about wins or losses. It's just about maximizing, your maximizing brain. your potential yeah. while you're in the moment. And this is more for the older kids. Let me, let me specify that again. Yeah. It's not for the little kids, little kids, have fun, dodgeball, make friends. Great. This is for the older kids who compete a lot. Don't disrespect your parents by giving a piss poor effort. Yeah. And that's like the coach is kind of going to have to like, again, you can't tell them that because you're trying to be that good parent, but that's kind of where the professors come in and they can kind of tell you. And I've seen it in our school. The professors will look at the kids like, Hey, knock it off. But like, it's not a game anymore because you're transitioning from the kids class to the adult class soon. Right. And you, when you make that transition, it's serious. Right. There's no more uh, snakes or no. So yeah. like when you're, Orange belt, green belt. I think those are the higher belts. When you're those belts, it's time to lock in a little bit and change the way you look at the game because it's a lot of money for you to train and you don't want to disrespect the people that are paying your way because someday you're not going to have them pay your way and you have to pay it yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's why adults pay attention more because it's coming out of their pocket. Right. So when things are getting paid for you and it's not coming out of your pocket, you can kind of stay like in that little kid mindset. So making that adjustment to when you come back, say you leave, maybe you get like, we've, I've seen kids who have left jujitsu then come back later, but maybe that's why they lost their way. But like they came back now they're fired up. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. just kind of want to bring that to a little bit of attention to that. So. Um, kids comp classes, kids comp classes. Again, that's, the same thing. It's, I feel like comp is even more, it's like, this is business. You know what I mean? Like everybody here has the same common goal, which is to compete and, and go out there and represent. So it's like even more so it's not just regular class. This is like, there should be, I don't think there should be any games or fucking around in comp. Kim's comp classes. You're going to, your kids are not going to, they're going to be tired. They're not going to like it. There's going to be cardio. There's going to be conditioning. There's going to be sit-ups. There's going to be all this kind of right. stuff. So hard round, like it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Like that one with that Mateo kid comes into our gym yeah. every morning. Yeah. This kid trains twice a day. I don't know how he does it. Let's be freaking 17 again. He just freaking comes in, taps out a bunch of old dudes and goes to Spanish class. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, what's going on? You know what I mean? Like, so, but yeah, kids comp classes is going to be, that's where you have to get your kid in. If you are a parent and you feel like, you know, my kid's not taking it serious, find the smoke for him. Maybe it's time for him to ask the professor, like, hey, can, if it's a girl, can she do the women's class? If she's an orange belt, green belt, I mean, she's got some decent skills. Right. So can I put her in the, the bigger people? Can I put her with, in the adults class? And, or can I put them and watch them get smoked a little bit? Because they got, maybe it's not challenging enough for them. And they got to make the move. Right. Um, let me see. Sportsmanships and competitions. You got something to say about that? So the, uh, the guy that I went against, against yesterday uh, now follows me on Instagram, so he may be listening to the pod. Um, this is no shade. This is just my opinion. So yesterday, match ends. We go to the podium. I go to the podium. I'm waiting there in the little podium bullpen, and the dude doesn't show. And I guess they have like a timer. And after the timer, it's, it's like 15 minutes I'm sitting there. Guy, and they call him probably 10 times. He doesn't show. Go up there, get my medal, take my pictures. 
and um, go to walk to the opposite side of the convention center area where my family's sitting. And I run into the guy. And I'm like, hey, man, they're calling your name over there. And he said, admittedly, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I was, I was being a little bitch and this is, I'm quoting him. I'm not saying this, you know, you know, I was being a little bitch and I, I, uh, I'm a little upset about losing. So I, I didn't want to go up there. Um, that being said, it was a two man bracket. So this guy by default gets second place. I don't think there's any shame in, in going and getting your medal at that point. A lot of people had it. There's a lot of people, our weight, our size, our age, our belt that had opportunities to sign up to this competition and didn't even sign up. You paid $130 to go potentially win or lose this match and, and kind of test your jujitsu. Whether you lost and got second or won and got first, like I think you still earned that medal. You still went out there and you did the work. Whether your game plan happened or not, you still went out there and, and tested yourself when a lot of other, um, other people are sitting at home that day or sitting in the stands not competing. You know, so I don't think there should be any shame in that. I think, I think dude had every right to be standing up there on the podium next to me. And uh, I wish he would have. To me, part of jujitsu is learning to lose because <laughs> we all have done it. Okay. Yeah. And when you do win, you want to post your podium photo. That is like an, a part of it. Right. And it sucks when you're the only one on the podium. You're like, what is this? Like, you owe it to your teammates. You owe it to the game of jiu-jitsu and the respect of jiu-jitsu to give your opponent the respect he deserves and give him his podium photo and have a second place standing there and have the third place standing there if one is there. You owe it to him to do that. I'm not saying you have to post that photo on your personal shit, yeah. but you owe it to him. My, you know, my you, comp last year... Um, I did a, a jiu-jitsu world league and I had two matches and I won my first and I lost my second and I, I earned my second place medal. Um, I think there's like five, six dudes in a bracket or whatever. Um, I posted the picture. You know what I mean? Did I, did I win all my matches? No. Um, but it was, it was progress. It was something that, I don't know. I didn't, I, I, five years ago, if you would have said, oh, are you going to be competing in jiu-jitsu at 40? I'd have been like, no, you know, like who, but here I am. On the flip side to what I just said, yeah. though, yes, you owe them that photo. Yeah. But also, if you're the first place, per, me personally, I, maybe some people like to do this. I don't, though. And I've never. I always do for, like, nah, nah, man, I'm good. Like, Because I don't like to stand on the number one unless I fucking earned it. Don't bring me up with you on the number one spot. Oh, so we can all take a photo together. Yeah. Fuck you, bro. <laughs> I up to me. Yeah. This is me. This is my take on this. Personally. I don't want to be standing on the number one unless I'm number one, bro. Right. I don't need no sympathy. You know, yeah. come up here. We're all first place together. Yeah. Scratch that. That's, you know, I know uh, definitely into female divisions that happens a lot, but like I've seen it in some guys divisions where it's like, we're all up here standing on the number one. It's like, no, but you're the number one in the middle, bro. Let me stand in the middle then. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stand in the middle, bro. Why am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so. Yeah, cause, cause, look, look, what if you would have got promoted on the podium? Right. Now, obviously not time yet, but what if that happened? Yeah. What if he's like purple belt and there's nobody standing next to you? That right. really sucks. And it's an IBJJF tournament. Yeah. Like, come on, man. That's, that's, you're on the, the golden blue mats. Yeah. Like, that's big. Give the guy his flowers if he beat your ass. Yeah. Yeah. And get him back next time. Yeah. And be like next time you're going to be looking up at me. 100%. No, I agree with you on that totally. I I um again, I I look at it in the flip. It, had I lost that, I still would have been there. You know what I mean? By all means, I think you're right. And that wasn't even my mindset, you know, initially was like I'll, I'll be honest with you, at at no point yesterday did I think second place was an a possibility. I just I that all week I've had the I'm going to win this mindset and not not be, I had no idea who I was going against. I, I had no fucking clue. That being said, it's just that was something that I like. I, I just predetermined in my head. So it's like I have to go in there with this. If if I, for a second I doubt that I'm going to be first place, I'm leaving room for that doubt to to sneak in and, and take over. And I, it wasn't an option. For me. I feel bad that I wasn't there. Your boy had a previous obligation where I signed up for. Your boy is a ding dong ditcher by trade. And so 
I signed up for this UPS basketball game. If back in the day, your boy used to play basketball a lot. I actually played pretty good. I was actually very good at basketball. I would say dirty purple belt ish. You know what I mean? Yeah. At basketball. Um, that yeah, was also 50 pounds ago, but <laughs> I literally, so I'm like, yeah, I'll play. And that's, I didn't and multiple <laughs> knee surgeries. ago. <laughs> that was no <laughs> knee surgeries. Right. So I, I was like, I'll play whatever, you know, I'm just trying to be, my goal was to be Bill Murray in space jam, walk out a couple cool plays. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then be like, dang, you can really play. You should. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. That was my whole goal. Well, we're out there. It's chaos. People are falling and diving, doing all this crazy stuff. You know, I got, I got my shine a little bit, a couple of baskets, but look at, I popped my hamstring. Oof. My knees swelled. Now I got to teach class somewhere. I can't move my leg. I'm like, dude, what am I going to teach? I'm teaching closed guard. And I was like, I can't even freaking, you know what I mean? I'm banged up over here. We're retiring from basketball, guys. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> it's over. It's over. Your body can't do what it used to do. And you kind of wanted to bring up some old, what happened to our UFC fighters? Like what happened to like Mark Coleman and Chuck yeah. Liddell looks nine months pregnant and all these freaking legends. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened. It happened to me yesterday in the <laughs> basketball court. Okay. <laughs> we got old. We got old, Kenny. But what's the Mark Coleman's post and videos of him? Mark Coleman's trying to get back into it, dude. To, to what? My, dude, uh, that, that Mark Coleman is the era of USC that I started watching. Like that's, I came in probably around USC three, four or whatever. And when Mark Coleman and uh, Don Fry and uh, Sham, Kim Shamrock, when those guys were dominating that, those, that wrestler. The godfather of Grand Pound. Yeah. Um, Coleman was such a fucking monster. And these guys are in there with wrestling shoes on. You know what I mean? Like th- different UFC back then. Scarf holding fucking Danny B. Severn and freaking win the freaking first heavyweight title. And it's, uh, it's, you've got pool noodles on the top of the fencing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, man. <laughs> He's. I feel bad for the older guys. Not so much Chuck. I think Chuck made pretty good money. Yeah. But like the older guys, the Shamrocks, those guys, like they literally just fought for fun. Right. There was no money. Yeah. yeah. And now guys are making money, and they're like, dude, who was I? The, uh, I came up in the wrong era. Yeah. Tank Abbott. The, yeah. Yeah. You know Pete Smith and freaking all these guys. They came up in the wrong era, and so like they're just trying to like stay relevant. And I think that's what bums me out too, is that like, I feel like, I feel like if the UFC inducts you into the hall of fame, there should be like some sort of like a medical benefits package or something that comes with that more than like, Oh cool. You hung my picture up. Like, yeah, I, I mean, there I, is, like the, I mean the NFL PA, I know NFL, they do that. They take right. care of their ex players and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And, and I've heard that, you know, Dana White does a lot of stuff for fighters that is, uh, no one knows about. Right. Right. Yeah. And I know that with, um, I know that that Chuck, I mean, he took care of Chuck. For Chuck was on payroll for a long time. Mm-hmm. I think WME kind of put a stop to a lot of that shit. I, but Forrest Griffin, stuff like that. It's like, I think, I think Dana took care of the guys that, like, helped make the UFC what, like, I, you know. There's the CT, the CT argument, right? Yeah, it's definite. Which it could be, but I also I think it's a pain pill argument also. Because if you're looking at WWE guys, right. their pain pills is what get them. Did you ever watch that Smashing Machine documentary? I have not. It's it's, uh, it's good, but it's also heartbreaking. Um, and it's just all about um, God. What was that guy's name? Uh, I can't think of the name right now. I'm, I'm blinking. Um, but he was a wrestler. He was a you know a phenomenal college wrestler. Got into fighting. I think only fought in the UFC one time, but he fought a lot of like overseas. Kerr? Ju- yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, uh, but became like a, and it shows him, he becomes a, addicted to pills in the documentary. And there's a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of injuries, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, it, but it would show like where he would, it would show him like going through some debt. And I, downtime. real talk, real talk, 100%. My first knee surgery, they gave me hydrocodone or hydrogen, whatever. Hydrocodone, yeah. Hydrocodone. And I was popping those things. And like my knee was feeling better. Yeah. But like I had told myself, I take these to go to sleep. Yeah. And I could, like, I was getting addicted to hydro co- hydrocodone or whatever that is. Yeah. I was getting addicted to it. No shit. Like, you could totally tell, like, how these things, like, make you feel better. And I'm like, wow. I would not take them during the day. It's like, I save them for my bed tonight. Like, right. And I'm like, all right, I'm done. No more. And I had to cut that shit because, like, 
I can, it does, you mean like when you're in a co- combat sport or any kind of sport, your body takes a toll. I broke my pelvis in a car accident in 2004 and they prescribed me Oxycontin. And uh, this is right at the same time that that talk show host who's now dead, Rush Limbaugh, mm. was being exposed for being addicted to Oxycontin. It was kind of like the, like the first time a light had been shined on that particular pill. And it, uh, when they prescribed it, they gave me a bottle of 99 like right when I got out of the hospital. So this <laughs> massive pill bottle. And they're like, yeah, take these for pain. And I have a pretty high pain tolerance. I took it one time. It made me nauseous. Then they gave me something for the nausea. So I took that. And then that makes you constipated. And I'm like, dude, no, fuck this. I did literally, I took them the, the one time and I'm like, I'm not touching this shit anymore. And uh, I just dealt with it for three months. I dealt with hip pain. I still, yeah, I, I low key like quit taking them because I got scared, but. I had a couple of refills left. I ended up selling them. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Old drug dealer. <laughs> Sold yeah. them. Sold them to people who really wanted them. <laughs> Made a little bread on the side. We were poor. Okay. Yeah. It, was, it was a different time where I was, had no money. Yeah. I wish I had done that because that would have been like seven, eight hundred bucks right there. Yeah, dude. I yeah. came up pretty good. I said, yeah. here we go. PlayStation 3. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's go, Madden. <laughs> Thanks, Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, do we got questions? This one threw me off a little bit. Yeah, me too. Man. So at Domi asks, are you familiar with the ecological approach to BJJ? Ethological. Ecological. Eco. Ecological. What do you think that means? I have I no have fucking no idea. no clue. Eco, e- eco. Yeah, can we Google it? Ecological approach to jiu-jitsu. So like by like where you're training at? Um... You, when you send something crazy like this to me, I know I'm a meathead and Kenny is very smart. So you better DM on the side of your question with a little more context. Okay, here we go. It says I started, in, this is from Reddit. So has anyone heard of the ecological approach to training BJJ? I started a new, at a new gym that does this teaching. It's a fascinating, it, it is fascinating because there is no drilling. Everything is full life resistance with what a lot of us would consider potent, positional sparring and different dilemmas broke down bite size if someone's newer it makes things far more intuitive to learn in this way than the traditional method just wanted to ask if anyone has experienced oh so it's just kind of like the kit dale version like he believes in you get better by just sparring rather than learning technique well like i I think you get better by doing both i think if you can't just have a technique class if you just had a technique class no one would come right Oh, we're just drilling, drilling on Friday nights at five o'clock. It, no, we're not going to show. There's no sparring, just drilling. No right. one would show. You have to have both. Situational sparring is probably I, what I believe is the best way to get better at jujitsu because it puts you in spots you wouldn't normally be put in. I've said that before. So that's kind of like the guy on top. You're in this position. Guy on bottom. You're this position. Yeah. Top top sweeps, submit. and yeah. it goes back to the wall. Yeah. Like that's how you improve on stuff you your dog shit at. Yeah. Um. I don't. You know what I mean. Like so. Like full on sparring, you're not gonna get that because you're just gonna do what you love. Right. <laughs> right. And then right. you're not gonna be in that bad spot. So, um, you do get better. The more and more you roll, but like, are you really, really getting better, or are you just getting better at rolling a, with that one guy in your class or yeah. the guys in your class? There's probably a lot of guys in your class. I give you trouble, Kenny. But when you go to another class or you go to a IBJJF right. tournament, they don't know your fucking game. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Half guard. You love half guard. Yeah. And yeah. if you're good at half guard, you're probably good at defending half guard. Right. Because you know what that guy wants to do. Right. Your opponent didn't know that. Right. <laughs> I told him afterwards. He's like, I love half guard. <laughs> My whole professor is like a half guard guy. Yeah. Like <laughs> I went up against this guy. What was his name? I can't remember his name. Black belt. And I put him in a lasso and he defended it beautifully. After the match, he's like, yeah, Clark Gracie's my professor. So like I, we do the lasso. We handle that shit all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That was one. And I was like, you're fucking strong from there, bro. Like I fucking get my shit off. But yeah, that's why. Right. Right. So yeah, positional sparring definitely is good. And it definitely, but like if you're just sparring, like, then that's just, what is that? It's open mat. 
Right. You're not going to get better at just going to open mats. I don't care. It's free. It's cheaper. You can go just to open mats and just jump school to school to school, but you're not going to get better. So ecological approach. I don't know if that answered your question. What does WDJT mean? What would uh, Donna heard John? Maybe what do? did you think? What do you think? Oh, what do, what do you do? Oh, whatever. I don't know, man. <laughs> but hopefully that helps. <laughs> Tony Asar, what's a good balance of lifting weights and training BJ? B, training, ah, training BJJ. If you're in great shape and you have a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. And you're like about that life. And, fi- and that can work to balance for you because it depends on the person. It depends on your age, your size, right. how dedicated you are, how good a shape you're in. Me personally, I, when I'm really going at a full clip, I'm training three to four times a week and I'm lifting like twice a week. Um, I think if you look at somebody like a, a Gordon Ryan, for example, uh, he trains, he lifts. You know what I mean? Like it's very open about that. You can definitely do it every day. Yeah. Lift and train, lift and train. The problem is you're like, I don't want to work out my chest today because I got to spar tonight. Right. And that's an ego thing. I think um, I, I, the type of weightlifting I've only done, um, I've never done any sort of like CrossFit or anything like that. Um, and I've never done any like functional fitness stuff. I've just done like uh, isolation, you know what I mean? Like back by chest try, mm. legs, core. Stuff like that. So um, that's the only type of training I know. Um, I've done some kettlebell workout stuff in the last year or so, which is kind of like an all around balance thing, but it ends up being boring to me. I like the isolated workouts. Like if I'm going to, you know. Your body is a, a great tool. The more you get, if you fucking suck on titties enough yeah, and tell your body there's going to be twins. <laughs> You, a lot of milk's going to come out them motherfuckers. If you train, <laughs> lift weights and jujitsu, lift weights and jujitsu yeah. every day, your body's going to be like, oh, this is what we do now. Right. And your body will adjust to, it. adjust to it. So if you can do it every day or five times a week and add it to obviously, and, and manage work and family and all that stuff, right. obviously – do it. I think more it comes down. Yeah. Just listen to your body. You know what I mean? Like your body will tell you like, Hey, this is some, there's some times when I train jujitsu and it's like, I'll do, let's say Monday, Tuesday. And like Wednesday comes around, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to train Wednesday and my body's like, nah, bro, like you need a day off, <laughs> yeah. go Thursday. And I'll take Wednesday off because something on me is just aching crazy. And I'll take Wednesday off. I'll go back Thursday and I'm fine. What do you think is the best time to train and at a gym, obviously, I would say the six a.m. If you're if you can get into an early class, yeah, then that opens your evenings up for another workout, right? Right. Um, so, you know, the perks of six a.m. class, everybody, or if you the earlier class you can get, the better, right? Is your home? You you got the evenings to be with your family, to be with your wife, to get weird, to do whatever you want. Yeah, you know, it's hard to get freaking sticky. At, at the house with a seven o'clock jujitsu class. Right. You come home, the kids are crying. She had to put them to sleep. Your dinner's in the microwave. By the time you, you clean, clean yourself up, sweatpants are on, my yeah. man. <laughs> Ain't I, happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if you're looking to train, lift and train, I would say the earlier jujitsu class is the best option for getting both. Yeah. It, it doesn't work for my schedule, but the days that I do take off, like, during the week, um, and go hit a, a 6 a.m. class or whatever, It my whole, the whole rest of my day just seems easier. That's great. It's like I, gotta, I, I come home, I'm like, I'm wide awake. You know what I mean? Like there's no being tired. Like, and that's the thing too. Sometimes I'll leave jujitsu at night and I'm tired because <laughs> yeah. of the whole day before it. You know what I mean? Work, the, the, the work stress, all that stuff. Then I just did all this training, so now I'm physically tired and mentally beat. Whereas if I do jujitsu in the morning time, it's like I leave class and I'm like, I'm hyped. It's like, fuck, I get the whole rest of my day. And it's mm. like 730 in the morning. Yeah. Hit that Starbucks. Yeah. You know, no. vente ice, vanilla latte, <laughs> soy, soy milk, <laughs> ad shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking go home, take the kids to school. <laughs> Come back, pick the wife up. Hit your second Svente Ice <laughs> Vanilla Latte Soy Milk ad shot. Uh, we're going to get a P.O. Uh, box. And if you want to send uh, Matt... Starbucks, Starbucks gift, gift cards. cards. Holy shit. <laughs> the fucking Oast Nation guy's going to be hyped. <laughs> we got any more or no? 
All right. Well, this is this, your professor, one of them. Yeah. Just saying congratulations on your gold. Uh, how does it feel to snatch that gold? Feels good. Feels good. It feels like there's, I still got work to do, you know? I don't feel like I did everything right, and I just put on a dominating performance by any means, but I I was able to impose my will over his, and um, now I know what I got to work on this week. So. You're now the LA Open champion, Blue Belt, yeah. Master yeah. Two. Two. That's my last match. I flipped to Masters 3 next month. <sighs> yeah. So that's, that's, that's the end of Masters 2. We hung mm. a gold medal on it, and we're out. We're out of here. And speaking of out of here, I think we're out of here. Um, you know what I'm thinking, buddy? Aim for the bushes. Aim for the fucking bushes. My name is Matt. This is Kenny. Follow us at O's Nation, BJJ on Instagram, at Freak Party BJJ on Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, BJJ Balance, yeah. BJJ Balance on YouTube, TikTok. Kenny don't post on there enough. Uh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but it's there we have yeah, one it's there uh there's people still fo- people keep new following it so <laughs> we'll post some stuff on there yeah. this week um anyways again thanks everything thanks for all the support thanks for all the love and uh we'll catch you guys next week oh